After hundreds of live streams using OBS, I finally gave in and switched to Ecamm. And man, it has made my life 10 times easier. Due to some recent updates, Ecamm is probably, no, definitely the best option for a Mac user now. And I'd say by quite far too. And to be fair, it would be the best option for PC too, but you can't use it. Now I'm gonna show you what it can do. In places, you'll hear me compare it to OBS. This is a free platform that's very powerful, but it's just too complicated to use for the average human being. And Ecamm has made all of the things most streamers, especially businesses, want seamless. So let's start with what it can do. Ecamm lets you stream in up to 4K, which if your internet allows it will look awesome. But I've always kept to HD because I don't want any potential lag. You can stream to all the major platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, and some others too. It's also worth mentioning, you can use it as what's called a virtual camera. So you can create all of these funky looks with text and graphics and then connect it to your Zoom so your presentations can look a lot better than a regular Zoom. You just set it up and then select the camera you want to use as the virtual cam in Zoom and hey presto. Now I spent hours trying to get this working on OBS. There are loads of videos teaching you how to do this, but for me, I'd never got it working. Let me know in the comments if you found the same thing. Now, I must have wasted hundreds of pounds and hours trying to fix this. If I just paid for Ecamm to start, it would have technically been free. You can also record remote interviews with people, share your screen, and play videos in your live streams too. I'm gonna to go into more details in these areas further on. Now, it's worth noting that you don't actually have to stream to get value from this. You could record presentations and interviews on it and never have to edit them as a result of the features I'm gonna cover soon. So let's start with connectivity. As I mentioned, Ecamm will connect to all of the big platforms you want it to. It also hooks up really easily to Restream and it's not a hard thing to do. You can access Restream at any time by clicking a small button in the bottom left of Ecamm. Restream is another platform that allows you to stream to multiple platforms or YouTube channels at once. So if you use LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube, you can appear on all of them at the same time. When you wanna go live, you just press go and it automatically records the whole thing too scenes now this is the fun bit scenes well they're scenes so you can create multiple scenes to hop between at the click of a button so this is me on a close then me and a guest then the guest and then the guest sharing their screen you set them up and then you either click when you want them to change or you use keyboard shortcuts overlays you can add overlays to your scenes if you don't know what an overlay is it's a name badge or a frame like this that you can see now you can also put in some animations. To create streams that stick out, it's all about overlays. Spend time on the design, import them, line up your videos, and you'll have a quality looking product. You can add text too. Now this might scroll across the bottom, be a name badge, it can be anything really. And there's plenty of font options to choose from. Picture in picture. When it comes to sharing your screen or playing a video, you can display your camera in a host of shapes and sizes, a circle, a square, a long square, and more. These options enable you to get super creative. A long square, basically a rectangle. Green screen. Now, I'm not a fan of green screen for lives. It just adds another layer of complexity, like that word, to the lighting. And then I don't wanna to have to worry about lighting and backgrounds and stuff, but it does work and it works well. Sound. The sound is incredibly easy to adjust. You just select the mic you wanna use from the drop down and select the levels on the bar. If you have a video you want to show or you want to share the sound that might be on your desktop when you screen share, you can control this here too, as well as anyone being interviewed. It comes loaded with some sound effects too, like an applause. Thank you. Now, I always forget to use these, but I feel like adding them to your streams is going to make it a bit more playful and fun. And you can put in backing tracks too. Now a feature I love. The whole point of going live is to interact with your viewers. Ecamm hooks up to your streaming destination and then gives you this comment box here during your stream. If you're using Restream, you can see the comments from all of your platforms you're live on too. You can then select any comment to appear on screen in these cool chat bubbles, or you can display the entire chat box down the side too. It's a great way to make the people who have dedicated their time to watching your live stream a feeling of special treatment. Interview mode. Now I touched on this at the start and it's a feature that is currently in beta, better, I never know how to say that. But for me, now this was the game changer. Previously, you could add guests to your stream by calling them on Skype. Now, I don't know if you've asked someone to Skype you recently, but you're met with this look of, what, Skype, why? It's not the 90s. It's like a swear word, even though it's actually pretty good. Ecamm have taken the best thing about other platforms like StreamYard and Restream and made getting guests on your show super easy now. You don't need to add Skype, Zoom, nothing. You can just send your guests a link, they click it, and it brings them to this cool waiting room. 
So you could be interviewing one guest live and then have another in the waiting room and then seamlessly bring them on together or say goodbye to one and bring on another. The experience for the guest is really slick here too. And to add them to the interview, you just click add to spot and that's it. With all of these other features and the simplicity of interviews, I don't think anything else really compares. And that brings us on to the price. So you get a 14 day free trial to test this out. There's a link in the description if you wanna have a look. After that, it's currently $20 a month or $40 a month. Personally, I think the top option is now the one to go for as it has everything and more I've spoken about. If you're a business, then I don't think I'd consider anything less. The $20 option is still very good and you can customize and still use Skype for guests as well as display some chat comments, but the slickness of interview mode is something that meant I personally had to upgrade. I'd say play with the free version and see what features you use to make the right decision for your situation. So now the cons. <sighs> well, the first thing, it's only available on a Mac, but that serves you right for buying a PC. <laughs> And then the second con is the price. It's not free, but it's a business and I'm happy to support this business because they have a fantastic YouTube channel, I'm in their Facebook group, and they seem to care about people's opinions. So it's only a con if you were coming from OBS, which is free, otherwise the pricing is pretty much spot on. And then finally, really the only issue I have with Ecamm is I find it quite hard to line up the overlays sometimes. So on OBS, you can click the thing you want to move and it moves. On here, I often get a bit lost. I hit the camera I want to resize and it gives me no option to move it. And then when I do have to resize with this zoom and pan feature, it's just a bit more fiddly compared to OBS. Now, this might be because I'm using the beta version right now to access the interview mode. So see how you get on with it in the trial. But that's it really, there aren't many cons. I've pretty much got nothing bad to say about this product, I really love it. And it only seems to be getting better, which is testament to the guys that make it, so well done. So if you wanna learn more about setting up a stream, then watch this video here. If you wanna learn how to hook up a DSLR or mirrorless camera with a capture card, here's a video where I've reviewed the cheapest option versus a more expensive version of the capture card, see if it's worth buying, and make sure you hit that subscribe button because we make videos about making videos. That's it. I need to come up with more compelling reasons.